The Incapate Club podcast is intended for mature audiences. I know we're usually talking about kids' cartoons and stuff, but there's going to be naughty language. Uh, anyway, uh, listener discretion is advised. The 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 belt the family belch. <laughs> the yeah, big belch family. Yeah, I love I love them bobbies. <laughs> and Bobby. his burgers. And his, bur- his name's yeah, Bob burger. Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Bob Burgers. The Burger Bob children. <laughs> <laughs> the Burger Babies. You're listening to the Ink and Pain Club Podcast, a proud member of the Geekly Grind Podcast Network. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast. My name is JD, and I've got Dustin and Phil with me today. Hello. Hi. And we are talking about a movie, if you've been a fan of the show for a, or a while, um, this podcast I made, uh, a movie I did not believe was ever going to come out. Because for, I swear, at least two or three years on our, on our like, looking for a head beginning of the year podcast, I swear that movie was on there every year. And it just yeah. kept, putting, it kept getting pushed back. And by God, I was like, until I, my ass is in the seat at the theater watching this, I don't believe this movie is real. <laughs> uh, but my ass was in a seat. I watched the whole thing. Uh, and it is very much real. And oh my lordy, it's real! It's, it's real. real. Uh, we are we are of course talking about the 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 Bob's Burgers movie, um, ba- <laughs> very much based on the titular Bob's Burgers, the the Fox uh, animated sitcom that has been going on for a lot longer than I thought it had been. Uh, yeah, yeah I, it, it feels like it. Yeah, I mean, this movie is loosely inspired by it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> based on a novel. <laughs> based on the short story yeah. Robert and his many burgers yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, so uh, yeah Boss Burgers has been going on for a long time and I- I'm sure both of you have been more up to date but I- I- it kind of dawned on me recently that neither my wife and I had watched Boss Burgers in pr- years probably um, I-, I think get all- that like I love Bob's Burgers but I can admit like for the last like few years it hasn't been at its best you know when a show goes so long you, you can only do so much i i put it and american dad in the same category where they're still good but it's just impossible for them to hit as hard as they used to yeah oh, it yeah. sort of it sort of feels like season eight the nine simpsons at this point where you know it's like you know it's starting to go downhill but you still enjoy it yeah you still like the characters it's still funny enough yeah yeah like um i think because my wife and I the other night just to like get us up prepped for this movie, uh, we tried to figure out like where about we dropped off, and I think we dropped off somewhere in season eight. So we started mm. watching uh, some episodes during that, and like yeah, it, it's gotten to the point where I think the show has gotten comfortable in its world and its style and stuff. So mm-hmm. um, like we we were still consistently laughing through it. It's still like Bob's Burgers is still funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and it's an enjoy. It's it's very enjoyable, so I, I enjoy it. But yeah, I, I get what you mean by like it's it's not just like that hard hitting. Like just it's the newness of it is is definitely uh, gone down since it's been on the air for God knows how it, long at this point. Exactly, the characters just aren't as fresh as they used to be. But like even more recent episodes, there's been uh, a few episodes that I'm just like consistently laughing through. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, me too. Like, yeah, the re. The recent Valentine's Day episode was really good, but uh, you know, it's just at that point where you're also going to get some clunkers with the really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I and think I don't... its problem now is it repeats a lot of storylines pretty often. Like, yeah, I Tina... wonder if Tina's of... <laughs> yeah, Tina really Jr. wants to get with Jimmy Junior. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you guys also had this similar problem. I think the reason we kind of dropped off for a while, and it seemed like a lot, like. They were consistently just doing holiday themed episodes, and no, they do those every year. It's always yeah. the same holiday, the same one. Yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with that since uh, usually the holiday episodes are pretty good, or at least early on, you, they kind of lose their sheen. Yeah, a little, usually but. it's one of the it's one of those where like uh, the Halloween and Christmas episodes they can like be hit or miss. But I always find the Thanksgiving ones like really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so. We've Bob's Burgers is going on long enough that like much like the Simpsons years ago, um, it now has its own theatrical movie. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, just in, in, in a very brief, uh, brief summation, 
that if you are a fan of Bob's Burgers, the show, I think you'll be a fan of this movie because it is ostensibly a long episode. <laughs> Which, yeah, uh, yeah. Know, whether whether that is good to you or not, uh, that I mean, that's up to you. But for me, yeah. that's literally all I, I need. <laughs> yeah, I know some people who say that's uh, a pro and some people who say that's a con. Personally, I think it's a good thing since... If you're going to do a movie based on Bob's Burgers, it should stay close to what the show is. You can go bigger with it, but, um, you know, you don't want it to be this, like, adventure movie. Oh, the Belchers get lost in the jungle or something, and they fight a <laughs> yeah. big pterodactyl. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, to me, it is just a longer episode with slightly higher stakes and a better animation budget. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's literally all I need out of, out of a, a TV adaptation of a, of a show. Um, yeah, exactly. So, I, yeah. That's what I expected going in, and that's what I got, and I loved it. I had a great time. I mean, uh, yeah, me too. I mean, that's just like the first SpongeBob movie and all the other ones after it. It just feels like a big, long episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it's a show like Bob's Burgers or SpongeBob, then a long episode can only be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, this movie starts out uh, I feel like on, on any number of episodes where it's just like, oh, the the Belchers are behind on a on a payment or something, and they have to figure out a way to like stave it off for another day. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're trying to get this this loan extension, which it doesn't go through. So they're like, okay, well, we have you have a week to pay us to pay us what you owe us, or we're gonna basically repossess everything, uh, all of your your kitchen equipment. And, well, that and the thing is, that's not even how the movie actually starts. It starts with like, oh, someone's getting killed. So that's very unusual for the show itself. Oh, honestly, I, I forgot. Mm-hmm. There's a flashback, like right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's right at the beginning. It's like six years ago before the current event of the movie. Yeah, you know um, what's so funny is I totally forgot that even when uh, the. <laughs> The corpse shows up later. I totally <laughs> forgot that there was a murder. I was like, wow, a dead skeleton. I didn't see that coming, even though I should have. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like, uh, so like just to make matters worse, this flipping sinkhole just opens mm. up in front of right in front of the restaurant, blocking, uh, blocking the, the entrance to the, to the restaurant. So it's like, well, now they can't make any money to, uh to, to pay back this loan and it just becomes this whole thing where like yeah there's a de- dead body discovered in the yeah. hole which leads to the kids having to basically have a solve a murder mystery while uh bob linda and teddy are off trying to like figure out a way to sell burgers and still make money um so there the, it, it, so between the kids and the adult storyline there's there's a lot going on and you know i i i want to say that Every character gets a little time to shine. Um, but I want to say this is like very heavily a Louise movie. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot I of, think that's a lot, fair. Yeah. A lot, a lot of the plot is driven by her motivations and her reactions. So I'll, I mean, I'll say both her and Bob are kind of the mm-hmm. two. But they headliners. usually are like the main. They usually they yeah. usually are considered the main characters of the show anyway. They carry yeah, a lot like, of the storylines. Exactly. Like the show is about the whole family, but if you had to narrow it down even further, it's usually Bob and Louise in the driver's seat. Yeah, because I mean, like Linda, Jean and and Tina are there and they have their own motivations that are going on. But I feel like those are very surface level, like Mm. Tina and Jean's uh, problem through their their problems through this movie are are very minor compared to like what's driving Louise uh, deep down. Yeah, um, well, Jean's is like a joke, even like Jean just wants to play this stupid instrument he made out of a napkin dispenser and yeah. forks. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, well, it's like Jean's entire thing is like he's having a crisis about whether like music is really his passion, if that's what he really wants to be doing with his life, because that's obviously what's been driving him for like during the show but they don't really dive too deep into that because it's so busy with everything else which it's fine uh mm-hmm. but i ro- or oddly but oddly i think gene has a lot of the best lines in this movie oh no he, he does like, i like i like that the most of his jokes watching this <laughs> like and i i know we oh go ahead no go ahead Dustin. oh i was just gonna move on to uh the next character but if you had something you wanted to say about little gene i, I was just gonna say like gene is one of my favorite characters in, in the show because I love you never know what his little one-liner interjections to the conversation <laughs> are going to be. And they mm-hmm. often just kill me. 
Um, <laughs> they're just so nonsense and out of nowhere, but it, it so punctuates whatever they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I was going to bring up how, even though uh, Phil and I were just saying, you know, we're sick of Tina and Jimmy Jr. storylines, I think it works for a movie since you want to get like the big problems of the characters in that movie. I think, uh, you know, when you're just doing these countless episodes, you can uh, you can differentiate it a little more. You don't have to do a Timmy and Jim- Jimmy Jr. story. But, you know, for the movie, it makes sense that that's the big problem Tina has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, I enjoyed that they at least put a spin on it. Whereas, you know, <laughs> in the show, Tina is just so blindly like, I want to get with this boy. I want to smack his ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just want to bury my face in that thing. Uh, I like that they kind of put some doubt on it. Like, you know, yeah. is is this big moron the the boy I really want? Ultimately, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. But <laughs> yeah, what if what if uh, they hook up and it's not everything she wanted it to be? Yeah, so that, I at least enjoyed that it wasn't the same uh, the same vibe that the show gives us. It gives us a, list, a, a different perspective on it, and I like that Tina was actually kind of having that bit of inner turmoil about it, at least to give us something different. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's it's more about uh, Tina's own uh, conflicts rather than just the chase. Mm-hmm. Um, Linda really doesn't have much to do in this movie, but she's just always funny. So, well, yeah. I, I, Linda, I think is she's more just tied into Bob's story. Well, I was going to say, I think Linda works best when as a support character. And I, I don't mean that to say that Linda doesn't have any agency, but I think when she is the counterbalance to to Bob, who is like constantly stressed out, constantly down on himself, where Linda is just this ray of sunshine, optimistic kind of person. And I think they balance mm-hmm. each other out so well. Well, yeah, it's it's like Louise and Bob, how they like have sort of this relation because they're similar. It's Gene and Linda are the same way. They just mm-hmm. have like, you know, this uh, bond that they're, you know, they work, you know, as the sideline yeah. character. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, uh, when my wife and I were catching up on episodes, we just watched the episode where um, pretty much everyone's out of the restaurant. So uh, Linda and Jean start the piano bar. That's a great um, one. I, really, and, I love that one. And, and, like just the, that's the, the soccer the, one, right? Yeah, it's a soccer one. Yeah, the soccer episode. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great one. But yeah, it just shows that you can pair uh, you can pair pretty much any of the, the characters off together and they're going to have some kind of dynamic that's different from what they would have with the other ones, but it's still going to be entertaining. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, this one, it's it's very much like the kids are off on their own, the adults are off on their own, and they're kind of split off into two teams until they kind of converge somewhere towards the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think, and we even said that she's kind of the central focus of this, but I think, Louise gets a lot of mileage out of this movie because it is it's I think it's a lot a lot more character development that I've seen out of Louise in the show where, you know, you kind of peel back her layers a little bit. But in this one, you're really kind of seeing her struggle with like, you know, is she mature because she wears these this this bunny hat the whole time? Um, And I like that we get kind of an explanation for why she even has him in the first place. Yeah. Sadly, mm-hmm. sadly, we don't get the uh, just m- much like we were ever cock teas with double D's hat. We're ne- I don't think we'll ever see what's truly under Louise's head either. That yeah, I that's one of the big. I don't want to say it's a big problem with this movie, but I remember this could be totally wrong, but I thought I remembered in an interview uh, Lauren Bouchard, the creator of the show, saying that we would see her without her ears in the movie. Uh, and no, they, he, they said the, um, they were just going to explain the origin of the ears. Mm, okay. Well, they did follow through on that at least. Yeah. But you just have like the perfect moment to do it. And then they <laughs> don't. And it's well, like, maybe, oh, you well, were maybe, right there, man. Well, maybe, maybe it's like the South Park movie where they reveal Kenny's face, but it's just a normal South Park face with yeah. some blonde hair. It's like, it's probably just <laughs> hair. I mean, yeah. Like Amanda's. I mean, I could I could go draw you a picture of Louise without her hat on. Pretty much what it would be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, like, there's nothing like amazing going to be under there, but it's just to see her like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did like we actually did get an, a, an explanation for it, which yeah, I think it's funny because the way she saw it makes her self conscious, but the way it actually happened because Bob and Linda are like, wait, no, that's not actually how it happened. It happened like this, and what the actual explanation for it is actually very sweet. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. There's a lot of those moments in this movie. 
Mm -hmm. There's a lot of moments like that in the series in general. I just love how uh, that that's one of the reasons I prefer Bob's Burgers over something like Family Guy or Rick and Morty. I mean, one of many reasons I prefer it over them, but uh, it's it's not as cynical. Yeah, yeah, it's not as cynical. The characters actually love each other in this family. Mm -hmm. Who would have guessed you could have an entertaining show while having the characters be nice to each other? Right. (laughs) Basically. But um, yeah, so I mean, the... I, I was very impressed with um, the animation in this and I'm like big props to, to Bento Box for, um, you know, getting this getting this all together, as, especially since I'm sure a lot of uh, a lot of the reasons this movie kept getting pushed back was just because of covid stuff, mm-hmm. I imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it looks just like the show, except, uh, you know, the character animation <laughs> is a little more fluid in, in a lot of spots. The it's cinematic. Uh, There's you know, shading. The shading. There's shading. Everyone has shading now. <laughs> um, but no, it you just looks it. like it looks like a very polished version of the show. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it says someone. I read somewhere it's like they're more Muppety in this movie. The way they move, kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah, they move move around like Muppets. I, if if there's one thing I uh, one nitpick I do have is um, every time there was a musical number, which thank God they limited it to the few that they did because I did not want this to be a full musical. Oh, um, that, that's, that's funny. You say disagree that. with you. Yeah, I, I was telling <laughs> Phil my exact my nitpick is exactly <laughs> the opposite of that. I think it could have used more songs because I wanted it to be a full musical, but they only have like three. It's like yeah, so it's like it. It feels like it wants to be a musical, but can't really commit to it. It doesn't feel like, you know, your Disney or even South Park. South Park movie had so many say, songs. South Park, yeah. South Park went all out with the music and yeah. their movie. And that was great. So I could have used maybe like two or three more in this. Sure. And, and you even have a scene in the middle of the movie where uh, the villain who we'll get to is like explaining their plan. And it's like kind of songy here and there, but not really. And it's yeah. not even on the soundtrack. So I can't count it as a song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, what I, what I was, we'll definitely get into the, the, the villain and like the, the mm-hmm. songs here. Uh, but my, my, what I was saying is my problem with a lot of the musical numbers is, um, a lot of the shots have the characters staring dead eyed right into the camera, <laughs> uh, and doing some weird dumb dance, but they are just locked straight looking at the audience at the camera and it, it bugs the shit out of me. I get, I get that. It's so I you know like who's it. singing. <laughs> it's like oh that guy that guy is singing now we know who he is and, and, and I, I, I think it especially bothered me in the carney musical number because it has an entire uh group of bunch of people dancing in unison but all staring right at the camera yeah <laughs> just locks on that for like 30 seconds i get that <laughs> that that song is probably my favorite song in the movie oh, but Lucky I, Ducks. Also, I love that song yeah yeah it's great, but it's also if you only have this many songs in the movie, what a weird spot for one of the songs to be like <laughs> y- you have three songs in this movie and one of them is just with the carnies. Th- yeah. That's just uh, not that I mind. It's just really weird for that to be like you have a movie at the beginning and the end and then the carney song. Well, <laughs> like, oh, no, the thing is, though, the carney, the carnies are like a big part of the movie for reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cotton Candy Dan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Who sells corn dogs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's great. Yeah, one like, other one other small nitpick I have just sure. while we're on the topic of the carnies. Sure. Uh Mickey oh, is in this movie mm. and he's one of my favorite characters in the series, but he's not voiced by his right voice actor. And this isn't the first time he's not voiced by his right voice actor. There he's was an episode Yeah, he's normally Bill Hader and there was an episode in the last season where uh, they're cleaning the beach. Yeah, exactly. And Bill Hader didn't come back to be him. But, um, you know, it it, I think he described it as just like a time and location kind of thing. And that Mickey would he would come back to be Mickey in the future. So I figured, well, if Mickey is going to be in the movie, obviously, they're going to get Bill Hader for that, at (laughs) least. And nope, they don't. Yeah, but they got Paul Rudd as Jericho, Tina's imaginary <laughs> horse. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, at least they got <laughs> they could get they him. could get Paul Rudd, but they can't get Bill Hader. Yeah, it, it, I I thought I heard something that he is like filming something somewhere else in the country. So maybe it was yeah. just he just couldn't get to L.A. Well, to well, they did say that cool. they'll redub uh, the parts he wasn't voiced later on with Bill. Yeah. And so maybe when maybe when the movie comes out on streaming or something, it'll be Bill again. 
Yeah, and I will say who they got to voice him in this movie is a lot better than who they got to be him in the show that one episode. <laughs> well, well, it, was I, Laura, it was Lauren in the show, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, but he even he even apologized. He was like, "Look, sorry, it was <laughs> we just couldn't do it. We'll get someone better next time," and they did. Right. So at least that that's good. Um, but uh, kind of on 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 the the note of of Mickey that um. We do get a lot of cameos from a lot of side characters in the show, mm-hmm. but like it's just very brief. Like we see um, Rudy and da- and Daryl at the school. We see obviously Jimmy Junior and mm-hmm. um, Andy and Ollie have like a few lines, right? Yeah, um, uh, you, you Zeke, see, like, Tammy, and Jocelyn. All yeah, mm-hmm. and, and obviously like the uh, Mr. Frond and all that. So we have these very quick cameos from them. Um, I like that Sergeant Bosco just keeps showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he's great that, though uh-huh sergeant bosco is always good yeah I, Cole. yeah I think it's probably for the best because you get you still get to see these characters but they're not there long enough to distract from where the story right. should be mm-hmm. there so and and that and it's because a lot of these cameos uh are in the movie and they reference like it's like oh hey it's this character we know i am hesitant to say that someone who has never seen bob's burgers is going to fully enjoy this movie um, because I feel like this movie was made very much for fans of the show because mm-hmm. there are so many little things that like, Oh, okay. I know that character from this episode, like the fucking, uh, the, the raccoon that lives out back of it shows <laughs> up. Like a trash trash mouth. Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he just read it back there. Teddy has like a quick conversation with the raccoon. Yeah. Yeah. Phil um, and I talk about that episode, like all the time. Like anytime favorite, we're talking about my favorite Burgers, episode. Yeah. yeah. That episode comes up. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, on the, on this, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, okay. Well, I was just saying, like, how you said this movie's definitely made for the fans. It's like, yeah, that's true, because, like, a lot of the plot actually, you know, there's a lot of setup in the actual show itself that sets up for the movie, like, how, like, um the uh, sidewalk is about to give in and all that, and the setup for the, you know, the villain at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, all over the last, se- uh, the last season, the sidewalk in front of the restaurant, like, gets worse and worse, and you can, like, see people tripping on it, so... Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're hinting that uh, this isn't good. Okay, yeah, cause like uh, so, yeah, like I said, I, I haven't been, uh, I'm not up to date with Bob's Burgers, so that's actually really funny that like that has been a thing in the show. Now, mm-hmm. I, I do have to ask some you guys since you're a little more current with this. Ha- was the fish owner cousin? Has he ever been in the show, or is he exclusive to this movie? He's oh, been oh, in the he, show a couple times. Yeah, yes, he's okay. been in the show. He he's always been their cousin lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He, I do feel like they should have tried to have him in the show a little more to kind of build him up as a more major character, but mm-hmm. he does show up at least. It's not like he he's just thrown into the movie to have a villain. Yeah, yeah basically. And, and, and I mean, I think that's maybe bad on my part for not being so caught up with the show is the fact that I didn't. I thought he was like this is the first time we're seeing him. So when they're like trying to f- like figure out, okay, who actually is, who, who is the, uh, the, the bad guy of the movie. My mind immediately went to him is like, okay, of course it's going to be the new character. It, this that, character like, you introduced, you can bring in, you could just write yeah, off right away. That, that was weird for me. Cause it's like, okay, uh, all the fish odors are there. It's like, Oh, okay. It's yeah. Like, it's just the fact though, that they introduced this character in the show and then they use him in the movie as such is what yeah. uh-huh. weirded me out a bit. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's only a couple times that he's in the show, like within the last couple seasons. I do mm-hmm. think they could have tried to bring him in a little more, but it still works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I, I think that even lends more credence to the fact this is for fans because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, oh, yeah. we know this character from the show. You're expecting like, okay, it's a movie. The bad guy is probably going to be someone that is new introduced to this movie, but I don't really think there's any new characters uh, like major new characters that are introduced to this movie. It's pretty much all existing ones. Uh, yeah. yeah, thinking about it. I uh, guess uh, some of the carnies, but you know, they're not like major characters. But, right. but they're all over the wharf anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but it's yeah. funny. It, I, I agree with you that this movie is made for fans, but I also feel like uh, it's not so self-indulgent that newcomers can't immediately grasp it. Because right. everything oh, no, in no. the show is pretty That's simple. It. Yeah, I've seen people who said, oh, I'm not really familiar with the show, but I did love the movie. Yeah. yeah. 
the well, characters you know, are just so simple you get who they are even oh if you yeah that's seen it that's before. the thing they're like oh i love the music i love the characters i love the quick rapid fire jokes of the movie yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah like I, I i definitely agree with you guys that i think anyone who has not seen the show can come in and see this and have a have a great time with it mm-hmm. uh, i think more, i'm more of like if you're a fan of the show and get all these like little references they're putting in i think you're gonna have like a better time mm-hmm. um it, with it um, agreed and, and being kind of a less of a le- le- less confused, like um, especially like when they go to the biker bar and, and Critter's <laughs> there and they say hi to him. I, I, someone who's ever seen the show doesn't know who Critter is and why they know him. Um, mm-hmm. but we, we as fans know who he is. Oh, yeah. Um, so stuff like that. Jeremy Snow here, owner and editor-in-chief of The Geekly Grind. I'm interrupting your awesome, regularly scheduled programming to ensure that you know about our Geekly Grind podcast network, of which this show is a treasured member of. If you haven't had a chance to check out our site, you can do so at www.thegeeklygrind.com. And while you're there, check out the other members of our steadily growing podcast family, including the anime-centric Blake and Spencer Get Jumped, discovering new heroes and comic book keepers with Chris and Lance, exploring the vast universe of geekdom with Geek Exploration, or, of course, appreciating animation's finer details with the Ink and Pain Club. Escape your weekly grind at the Geekly Grind. I, I did enjoy this movie. I'm not... I, I did notice it start to lag a little bit somewhere in the middle. It, uh, I totally agree, and I think it's because the characters are in the same spots for a long time. What's mm-hmm. going on there is funny and enjoyable, but like the Bob, Teddy, and Linda are at the wharf for a long time, and the kids are in the underground lair for yeah, a long and time. Then they have to like, and then they have to like sort of try to figure out how okay, how can we get all the characters together mm-hmm. with this setup to. I mean, and, and it, it works, it, but you do feel it. Yeah, it's a, it's just a minor nitpick. It's it's something I can look over easily. Yeah. Because like and, I said, you're still getting some funny jokes with enjoyable mm-hmm. characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't know if you either of you felt this way. I almost felt a little tired after watching this movie because <laughs> the writing of Bosbergs is so tight and rapid fire a lot of the time, where it's just like a lot of back and forth dialogue. And just to, for that, for an hour and a half, <laughs> I felt kind of exhausted after it. But hey, I, like, I, was I, still, I was laughing. I was having a good time. But like. Guys, slow down for a second. Uh, no, I don't. I don't feel that way because I feel, this show, Bob's Burgers, is one of those shows that I could just binge watch because it's just a nice, relaxing show for me. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, it's like whenever I have a bad day, I just put it on like a couple episodes for a few hours. I'm just okay. I'm mellow out. I love this show. I'm very happy right now. That's yeah. kind of how I described it to Phil the other day too. I was telling him this seems like uh, the kind of movie where if it's like. In the future, when it's like airing on FX or whatever, this would be a great movie to just throw on whenever it's on because it's just a cozy movie. Honestly, I feel like it might be more enjoyable just watching it from home. Like, I'm glad I saw it from the theater Mm -hmm. uh, just for the novelty of seeing Bob's Burgers on the big screen. Mm -hmm. But it really is the kind of movie you can just kind of like on a lazy Sunday, just throw on and watch. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I, th- I think the fact that it does more or less feel like a very long episode, it's like, OK, just break this up into a three part episode. It just looks mm-hmm. nicer than the rest of them. But yeah, just mm-hmm. play it in, mm-hmm. in conjunction with like in a, ma- in a Bob's Burgers marathon or something. And mm-hmm. bam, there you go. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I really enjoyed this movie. I mean, I I, I obviously wanted to go see it in theaters because I want to support 2D animation <laughs> in yeah. theaters again, which this is a very rare occurrence these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the thing about this movie is um I I think like the opening weekend uh numbers came in for it and it's not amazing but well um, yeah. I it, heard it's it like did better than I heard it did better than Princess and the Frog believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate but uh, it is also unfortunate, kind of, but that's what I heard though that's yeah. what they compared it to. But the way I described it, I think it was with Phil, but I'm sure I said it to other people too, is uh, what does Bob really have to lose if it's just like a flat out bomb at the box office? It's already mm-hmm. gone for 12 seasons. I didn't think it was going to like come in and save 2D animation. Oh, like, no. I don't know. Just I mean, make it a big I remember, thing. I remember when they had the Fox merger, I heard rumors they were just going to flat out cancel the movie, and I'm yeah. glad they didn't. But yeah, there, were, it's, there was huge rumors they were just going to cancel it. Yeah, it's a small miracle that this movie even exists at all, because I remember back in like the 
late 2000s, early 2010s, you would see articles pop up that are like uh, Family Guy movie announced, American oh, Dad yeah. movie announced, and those never went anywhere. Those fizzled out. Even other shows like Adventure Time was supposed to get a big screen movie and it just didn't happen. So mm-hmm. I think considering the track record with announcing a show, getting a movie and then it not happening combined with the Disney merger, this movie could have been dead in the water at so many points, but oh, no, yeah. it managed to yeah. come out. Just the fact that it's actually in theaters. JD, you were even saying how like it just kept, kept getting pushed back and mm-hmm. pushed back more and more. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that we were even able to see it is a victory. Yeah. Basically. And, uh, and um, I was not expecting this to do great numbers because it's not mm-hmm. like when the Simpsons movie came out where the Simpsons was, uh, well, past its prime at that point. But it was Everybody still knows who the Simpsons was, yeah. The yeah. Simpsons is a cultural icon. Bob's Burgers is just this fun little show that people watch. <laughs> it's, it's the hot topic crowd show, sort of, kind of. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's what the teenagers like, basically. Like, fa- Family Guy is not wrong about that. Teenagers do like this show. Yeah, it's it's so interesting seeing how because uh, in the two thousands, Family Guy was huge. You were seeing like merchandise for it everywhere. Nowadays, mm-hmm. nowhere, Family Guy's not a thing with merchandise. Not anymore. even Simpsons has merchandise anymore. Yeah, but I still see Bob's Burgers at like box lunch at the mall whenever I go there. Oh yeah, yeah, me too. I see shirts and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I I still see Bob's as kind of a niche show. It's not. Oh, I don't see it having a as widespread of a, uh, as appeal as like Simpsons and Family Guy does. Yeah, but I almost see that as like that's how it maintains its quality mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. because it does not. It hasn't become like super oversaturated. Um, because yeah, I, I, I'm watching these like more modern episodes, and like I think the the writing is just as, as snappy, and j- like the characters are just as enjoyable to watch yeah. and. And, and watching this movie, which is the most up to date thing, uh, like every character feels exactly the way they're supposed to. They interact uh, with each other the way that I expect them to. Yeah, um, I don't think yeah. Bob's Burgers ever like, like I said, you know, you get some clunkers here and there, but I don't think it's because they're like doing the characters dirty or anything. Mm-mm. It's just even on it. Here's the thing, though. Like, I remember when they first announced the show, it's like, oh, it's from the same people who did home movies. That should be good. And then when I first saw it, I'm just like, wow, this show looks really bad. And I'm <laughs> After watching that, that's it's one of my favorite shows of all time now. Yeah, <laughs> and now there's like five other shows that look exactly like it. Yeah, uh, yeah. we'll get that. We'll get to those some other time. <laughs> <laughs> I've not yet watched Central Park or Great North. I've seen a little of both, and neither are as good as Bob's Burgers. Oh yeah. <laughs> We'll but that, that. Might just be, that might just be because I already have this love for Bob's Burgers. But right. uh, mm-hmm. even Bob, I don't think, like, nailed it right away. Season one's, like, okay. Oh, no, but, season yeah. one's very rough. It's very, because it was yeah. a lot more edgier back then. I think once they finally found their group, it's like, okay, let's just, you know, ease off the edge a mm-hmm. bit. And... I think season two onwards, it's good to go. I think the golden yeah. era of the show is seasons two through eight, six. Eight. Yeah, around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so a, a pretty good long time. Yeah. It, it, even though, like, even though the show, you know, isn't as good as it used to be, it's still good. I feel like the movie is still like, you know, on par with those earlier seasons. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I was never saying like, mm, this is an okay Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, sorry, go ahead, Dustin. Oh, I was just gonna say, what's your guys' favorite scene in the movie? Like, uh, <laughs> favorite thing that happens in it? Um. I might give a different answer on a different day, but just fresh in my mind from seeing it a few hours ago, I did enjoy the uh, the car chase and subsequent <laughs> uh, falling into the hole towards the end of the movie. That was my uh, answer too, because mm, I just think good. that that's that's the culmination of the two characters, fi- uh, the two groups of characters finally coming together. And you see the Belchers like all together in like this mass panic, um, which then leads to them like thinking they're about to die. <laughs> And that was honestly a very sad but heartwarming moment. Yeah, and then they get into the part where they talk about Louise's ears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the perfect time for it. it yeah. It's a great couple of scenes. Uh, that scene that scene has one of my favorite jokes in the movie, too, where they're trying to get the, the, Kopi, the Kuchi Kopi <laughs> thing on, and yeah. it, it just keeps going on and off, and then Bob hits the chair with his fist, and Gene's like, Dad, are you the Fonz? Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, Gene just has like, some of the best like weird interjections, and I love mm-hmm. it. 
Um, but yes, I w- I would say that the, the, basically the car chase is probably my favorite part. Oh of yeah, the movie. it's it's very it's very different for from the usual show too because you don't really get a whole lot of you know action scenes in Bob's Burgers like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think it's the most movie scene in this movie because yeah. I, I was saying earlier how I'm glad it feels more like the show rather than like this big crazy adventure movie. But I still like when it has some movie esque elements. So yeah. I, I thought that scene was really fun. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. like towards the beginning of the movie, we've got like that 3D camera rotation of uh, <laughs> yeah. of, of their street. There's a lot of long. There's a couple of long shots of uh, like <laughs> I the two I can I can think of as just like. Uh, the first time Louise gets called a baby on the playground, they kind of zoom out to show everything. And <laughs> I like, like, I like the overhead shot of them walking through the Carney park. Um, mm-hmm. so th- th- that kind of gives it that more cinematic feel. Oh uh, yeah. I was going to bring that up earlier. How like the musical numbers have like really good choreography for an animated movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause they're all, it, it's just really I like the way they're all animated, how they're dancing about and all that. It's really good. Agreed. Yeah, it's very smooth, and it's even uh, further pointed by um, <laughs> the end credits. <laughs> yeah, which is Every, all these side everyone char- with their dance cycles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, and a lot of it's just the side characters that weren't in the movie. Uh, yeah, it's like, that's here, a good we, way to get them in. Yeah, yeah, we haven't forgotten about you guys. Here they are. Yeah, yeah you can have. Laugh. We know how <laughs> many Gale fans are out there. I'm to say I laugh when Gale shows up. It's with a cat. <laughs> um, and a little karate kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but Dusty, you, you also said the car chase was your favorite scene. Yeah, I, mm. I think so. The car chase slash when they're in the hole. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so Phil, what was your favorite part then? Uh, besides that, the, I mean, that's one of them. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> I, oh, I like the part where, uh, the uh, health inspectors, uh, Ron and Hugo <laughs> show up and they're I forgot. talking to the one customer and they're like trying to hide from him and the customer's just going along with it. It's like, hey, do I go too? <laughs> Should we go too? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> just like a random guy. <laughs> so good. I forgot uh, Ron and Hugo were in this movie. They're yeah, they're only, they, they're only there just for that scene, just to hide from him real quick. Yeah, yeah but it, it's like I was saying earlier, it's enough to not distract from where the story should be, but it's enough to yeah. give the fans well, of the show. Well, it's even like, oh. it, it, it does push the movie because that makes them go into the war. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, Good yeah. stuff. No, it, it's like, I, I think we can all agree, like, this is a really fun movie. I'm I'm glad that, uh, you know, this is a, finally able to come out despite so many delays and so many setbacks. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like this is what a Bob's Burgers movie should be. It is, mm-hmm. it is the same snappy dialogue from the show, the same kind of love put into the characters of the story that the show does. Um, it just has a bit of a bigger budget on it. And honestly, that's all I really wanted. And mm-hmm. I, I got what I expected out of this. So, yeah. And I, I think one thing that does justify it being a movie over just episodes is also the stakes are higher here. Like the mm-hmm. Belcher family is on the verge of losing this restaurant on top of this murder mystery. Like things have never been more dire for them. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it, plus the fact when they get buried in the hole, it's like, Oh, they could actually die. Yeah. And I mean, and uh, Grover is, is planning to blow up the wharf and then demolish pretty much half of the town to make his or a mega mini mall. Yeah. 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 It's a yeah. Mini mall thing, but it has yeah. a lot of gift shops. It has a lot of gift shops. <laughs> uh, and a lot of parking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely, the stakes are a lot bigger, but like, not into the not to a point where it's unrealistic. Yeah. Exactly. It's a realistic problem. Mm-hmm. And I liked that a lot of the fantastical elements that we saw in the trailer are actually just fantasy sequences. They weren't actually like. Just in I was the just movie. telling Dustin about that the other day about how like in the trailer you see this robot. I'm like. They're not going to just put a robot in here. That just seems very out of place. <laughs> a robot in a spaceship, or yeah, or and then it's just, it's just a part of yeah, it's just ruins. Part of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorite quotes too. Where the two uh, the t- <laughs> we call the them a kiss copies. ass. Would you say <laughs> you heard? Oh, you heard me. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damaged collectibles, some of which yeah. are lucky enough I mean, to still you, be you, here. Yeah, I mean, you kind of got the. That's the thing, though, because with the robot, I couldn't really tell if it was part of the movie or not. But you could tell with the toys and uh, the horse riding that it was a dream sequence of some sort. But the robot thing, I wasn't sure because, you know, the <laughs> Simpsons movie had a lot of stupid stuff like that. Yeah, I'll I'll go on the record and say this. Like, 
it's obvious, but it's not even close how much better this movie is than the <laughs> Simpsons movie. Oh God, I I would watch this movie in a heartbeat at, over the Simpsons movie. I like oh, yeah, I watched it should. like twice in my life, and I'm like, yeah. I'm good. It, it's like I told Dustin with the Simpsons movie. It was good the first time I saw, it, but at each viewing after that, it, you just notice how terrible it kind of is. Yeah, that same here. Like I saw it in theaters, and I said, yeah, that was pretty good. That was okay. And then, like, any other time I've tried to watch it, I was like, this movie's so boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't help that it was, like, 20 seasons of Simpsons in. Oh, like, yeah, it, it, that's, movie, so. it, that's the thing. It's the thing. It's like South Park, you know, its movie came out season three where it's all the hype. Uh, Simpsons came out way too late, you know, when it was already, you know, derailing. And mm-hmm. I feel like Bob, Bob came out at a good time, like... You know, before it got really bad, it came yeah. out, you know, just when it's still good enough. Yeah. No, I, I think this movie came out at the perfect time. It's had enough time to, like, establish itself as, as a quality show. And now it's like, OK, we have a lot of this goodwill built up. We have all of our world and our characters established and ever like we know what we can do. Now we can make our movie where we can really ramp up the stakes and ramp up the the animation budget to make this yeah. like, look really clean. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think good, all in all, good, good movie. Is, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I cannot wait for it to come out so I can watch it over and over. Yeah. yeah now I just want to see it again. My my uh, whole family loves Bob's Burgers. And so my mom's been trying to talk my dad into seeing it. Uh, <laughs> my dad also loves the show, but he just, you know, doesn't want to go out <laughs> to the movies often. So I told him, if you guys go, I'll go with you. I mean, <laughs> give, it, give it like a few months. It's either going to be on who. So. I, I, think, I don't think, I think it's Disney, you have, yeah, Disney Plus I think, and HBO Max have the rights to it, I think. Yeah, and I think they said it's only going to be a 45-day window. They've been doing uh, like streaming services, not to get on a tangent, but they've been getting a lot better with like, okay, we're going to get this in straight onto streaming because um, I logged in HBO uh, today and that new Fantastic Beast movie is already up there and I swear that came mm-hmm. out like a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah, that's, I guess, that's I guess, how it was a turning red. Like it just came out mm-hmm. on Disney Plus, and then like it felt like two or three weeks later, it's like, oh, it's out on Blu-ray already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess they just realized, you know, uh, streaming such a good uh, thing now. I I, I remember uh, that movie Encanto that bombed when it was in theaters, and mm-hmm. then when it was put on Disney Plus, it just blew up. It was huge. Uh, I yeah. wonder if Bob could see kind of. I'm not saying Bob's going to reach the same popularity explosion as a big disney movie but it, it would be nice if more people saw it once it's more uh, easily accessible yeah, yeah exactly and i just want to put this out to all streaming services who might stumble across this episode put your <laughs> shit on streaming and i'll stop pirating your stuff yes please <laughs> please make i will give you money to watch this just make it accessible <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to pirate your stuff but like I can't find it. <laughs> Look what you're making me do. <laughs> this is your own fault. <laughs> uh, but uh, is there anything else you guys want to mention before we wrap this up? I yes. think we covered it. Oh, OK. Um, there was supposedly supposed to be an animated short uh, for the movie, but I guess it only aired in selected theaters. But I guess oh, they showed it on so FX. The story I heard on it. I don't even know if this is true. But I heard it was a short made for something else, like during while the movie was in production. It was made to air in front of a different movie. I'm not sure what, but due to COVID uh, making theaters pretty uh, unpopular, uh, <laughs> they didn't do it. So bef- to promote the movie, they all through this uh, Memorial Day weekend, they were playing it every night on FXX. The, it, the short? Yeah, this yeah, new short. It, it, oh. It's animated like the movie. Like, it's very fluid. It has a shading light. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just the kids uh, doing a, like, a for a talent show, singing mm-hmm. this dumb song called My Butt Has a Fever. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it's yeah. like really catchy, and it, it looks great in, when it's animated. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's just, it's a nice, funny short. Yeah, oh. same animation quality as the movie. It's just really cool to see. And so the short is about Mr. Frond being like, you can't do this play. You're talking about butts. We got to stop you. So they like <laughs> uh, lock him out of the auditorium. You know, it's very do the Bart man. Right. <laughs> but, you I, know, I, it, I it, no it's idea. fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I think you guys can, can tell from our review. I think we all really enjoyed it. And whether you're a Bosberger, I think you'll have a good time with this. Um, if you want to go out to theaters and watch it, it's in theaters right now. 
Uh, but I'm sure if, if you're still pretty hesitant to go out to theaters, I know a few people that are just like, still not, don't trust it. I, I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Um, at least try to support this on streaming when it does come out. Maybe bump yes, those yes. a little bit because Bob's is such a fucking wholesome show. And yeah, it deserves the love. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I it, love it. It deserves your attention. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go and uh, finish catching up on Bob's Burgers because uh, it is. I think this might have mm-hmm. reignite, reignited my interest of this show. So mm-hmm. nice. Good. Uh, well, boys, thank you for being on here with me. It was a pleasure. And hey, thank you. Anytime. <laughs> and uh, to all of you out there, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, do be sure to let us know on our socials and in the comments below uh, what you thought about this movie, if you did see it, or just like tell us what your favorite episode of Bob's is. You know, there's so many out there. I'm sure everyone has a different thing. Yeah. Uh, yep. yep. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Be safe out there, and we'll see you again next time. Keep those buns toasty. Thanks for listening. You can find all the links to our social media pages in the episode description. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and join our Discord. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast. The Ink and Pink Club is happy to be part of the Geekly Grind Podcast Network. We'll see you next time.